Dan. <laughs> are we on now? Yeah. Oh, we are. Well, welcome everyone. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Uh, nice to see you, Marie. Nice to see you too, Dan. Uh, this is our first show um, where we're in separate parts of two different nations. And uh, uh, so um, it's a show that's a little bit different, I think. Um, <clears throat> we had an, yeah, originally an idea to have some people on who we would um, interview and it, it wasn't working out. And then we, real, we realized at some point that um, really this was about some healing that we're going through. So um, we went into prayer on that and it was, it was pretty clear that that's what was going to happen. Um, I've prepared some things and there were a couple of uh, miracles that, I, that have occurred for me over the last oh, uh, several weeks. And uh, so I wanted to share that with you. Should we, uh, I know anchor, is, should we anchor is, the show first on the miracle principle, Dan? Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, this is principle number six, mm -hmm. and it is uh, miracles are natural. And when they do not occur, something, something has gone wrong. So, um, yeah, with that, I'd like to like, just go into a, a prayer. Um, inviting spirit in. And really, the, the perfect prayer I found was actually Lesson 361, which is near the is the really at the end of the lessons and it's 361 to 365 but um it actually invites spirit into our to our lives <clears throat> this holy instant what i give you be you in charge for i would follow you certain the direction your direction gives me peace and if i need a word to help me he will give it to me if I need a thought, that, that he will also give me. And if I need stillness and a tranquil open mind, these are the gifts I will receive of him. He is in charge by my request. And he will hear and answer me. Because he speaks for God, my Father, and his Holy Son. And it's interesting that Dan opened up with a prayer because when we were joining, um, he asked me, you know, what part of the course felt inspiring. And I actually couldn't come up with one until this morning. And it should have been obvious, but it wasn't obvious until I was ready. It's actually a quote that I have on my Twitter account. So I feel to share that with everyone right now. It is from chapter three, the innocent perception. Prayer is a way of asking for something. It is the medium of miracles. But the only meaningful prayer is for forgiveness. Because those who have been forgiven have everything. Once forgiveness has been accepted, prayer in the usual sense becomes utterly meaningless. The prayer for forgiveness is nothing more than a request that you may be able to recognize what you already have in electing perception instead of knowledge knowledge you have placed yourself in a position where you could resemble your father only by perceiving miraculously you have lost the knowledge that you, yourself, are a miracle of God. Creation is your source and your only real function. The statement, God created man in his own image and likeness 
needs reinterpretation. Image can be understood as thought and likeness, as of a like quality. God did create spirit in his own thought and a quality like to his own. There is nothing else. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Marie. Um, the miracle that I wanted to share um, is really about addiction. And it wasn't something I realized I was addicted to until it came up time after time. And even having been in community for nearly a year now, I felt that this, this pull. And it was really an addiction to letting go of my ex-wife. Uh, I had a really hard time doing that and I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, I knew that the call was really strong for me and that it was time for me to leave. Um, I had been doing the course for a lot of years and um, when I met David, Lisa and Jason uh, several years ago, uh, I realized, yeah, and it, after the mystery school in particular, yeah, it was my time. It was my time to follow the call, answer the call. So uh, I did that, and um, uh, it was my path and not my ex-wife's. And uh, so um, I went ahead and, and we split everything up. I came here, and then over the next months, there was a, a time where uh, I could realize, I, I, I could feel that there were so, still some things I was valuing from that seeming life. And finally, it, 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 it was painful enough to where I, I just, at, at some point said in prayer, went, went deep into prayer and I said, look, you have got to help me get rid of this. Uh, you have got to help me. I want to turn it over. I know that this is my addiction, it's my clinging, and I, I, I want to give it up. I want to let it go. And so that's my part. I'm turning it over. So I'm waiting now for you, Holy Spirit, to show me that you're going to do the heavy lifting on this. So not long after that, um, we saw a movie. And it was uh, What the Bleep, which probably most of you have seen. And um, in that movie, at some point, they said that what is often referred to as love in special relationships is actually an addiction to the emotion, an addiction to the feeling uh, regarding some emotion that um, you felt attached to. And I thought about that and then realized that that was a key for me. In fact, the addiction for me was the need for approval. And that was something that um, my wife at the time uh, gave me from the time I knew her early on, so nearly for 50 years. And um, I realized that that addiction was a distorted miracle impulse. And it was time to be free of that. So, um, yeah, I, I put that into prayer. And that night went to bed. And in the morning, it was gone. So really having struggled with that for a year, um, I was just so blown away to have it 
wake up and not feel anything along those lines. And it's not that I won't at some future date or, or whatever, even, even in, the, in, the, in the present, um, have feelings, but it, it just changed me. Uh, it allowed me to suddenly feel like uh, this is my choice. This is, this is, I'm in control here. And um, I'm not subject to something that is beyond me. And um, it, it reminded me then of a movie that probably many of you have seen called The Shack, which was about a guy who lost his, um, his, his daughter to um, someone who abducted her and actually killed her. And then it was about his journey to let go of his grief, to let go of his attachment, to let go of his judgment, to let go of his blaming God. And because he was at the, he was at the verge of, of committing suicide, he was th that distraught. And so um, where this picks up, we're gonna show a clip of this, and where this picks up is where he had ventured in, uh, into this, this shack in the winter and then had an experience where he met a hiker who turned out to be Jesus, who then um, brought him uh, into connection with um, the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he then is going to experience on uh, this little boat ride that he's out in, where he's gonna go out into this lake and experience with what it is to, to keep your eyes on what it is you're after, to keep your eyes on the goal. And this is the Christ. And so uh, if we're ready for that, we can roll it. Actually, you know, when Dan said he wanted this clip, I knew that um, it was meant to be, but I wasn't really sure how that was going to relate to all the miracles I've been experiencing. It's been really nonstop. And you know, when Jesus is in that scene, I don't really care. I just want people to know what it means to be truly loved. Holy shit. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, Dan was talking about his addiction to a feeling. And for me, what was the biggest healing this past few days is really about rejection and the fear of rejection. And um, the key thing about that is just being very emotional and I feel everything and I cry for everything. It seems whether I'm happy, I'm sad, feeling in love or loved. And I love someone. And, um, and when I can't understand what the emotion is, I try to, why there's an emotion, I try to stop it. And literally that scene when he feels like he's drowning in the boat has been my experience over and over again when this emotion would come up. And what happened was since I landed here from the very first day, that's what Mighty Companions are for. I joined with Utah, and she was that presence of Christ for me that said, it's okay. It's okay to be emotional. Let it up. And so there was a lot of tears in just allowing all the emotion to come up, even though I couldn't understand why. And as the days progressed, sharing it in the expression session, and I've been told I don't express enough, but now I recognize I don't express enough because if I feel the emotion is going to drown me and it's so overwhelming, I won't speak it. But yesterday or the day before yesterday, I finally tapped into that 
you know, growing up as a child, you know, I could hear my father saying, you know, like, oh, why are you so emotional? So that voice was still in my head about being very emotional. And this path is really about allowing all these emotions to come up. And I said to Utah, you know, yeah, I, I never really truly believed I could be loved enough to be accepted for being so emotional and not even being able to express why or what the source is. And it's taken me quite a while to actually access that and recognize that that's what I was holding back because I didn't feel safe enough to allow myself to be this way. And at the same time, the miracle was recognizing that as a child, I grew up in a home that had a lot of arguments and a lot of yelling and screaming and cursing. And there was always a state of instability and a state of fear. And as a child, you know, I learned to just keep myself together and not speak and not allow my emotion up. And so to be in a place now that says, it's okay, you're not going to break if you have emotions. David cried for 10 years. Look at Jason. He cries all the time. I mean, look, I get that intellectually. I do. And, but it takes another, you know, another place to be like, okay, it's okay. You know, and Yuta shared her own parables for her emotions and how she kept allowing it. And I think that's a really, really beautiful thing about having mighty companions is the things that I really thought I could handle it myself. Frankly, I, I take great pride in being independent and handling it myself, but it wasn't working. And the miracles that have been happening since arriving here, I feel closer, feel, feel closer to Dan, who's physically apart from me. I feel closer to Kristen Marco, who's also in Mexico. And it's just from just allowing these emotions to come up, you know, and um, speaking it and not being overwhelmed. I literally felt like this guy, like, I'm going to drown. And like Yuta looking at me like, it's okay, stay with me, it's all right. So yeah, and this feeling of being loved, I don't know that I don't feel fully loved until I actually express what I couldn't even express out of fear of rejection. I didn't even know that was about rejection until I expressed it because it was just so deeply in my subconscious, you know. So thank you for picking that clip, Dan. It's perfect. Yeah. I knew it was going to be perfect, but I didn't know until today, right now, why it was. So yeah, that's the miracle. Oh, that's good. That's beautiful. I, I, you know, we weren't too sure exactly how this was going to work out. Because um, <clears throat> Marie wasn't really sure if she was ready to express anything or not. So I've got a ton of material here anyway. Um, <laughs> we, can, we can pull this off at another time. But <clears throat> I, just, I just wanted to share that I think that, that that clip, what affected me, the first time I saw that was in the mystery school, and what really affected me was the Jesus saying, don't look back, look at me, look in my eyes. Because that is, that's what we want. I mean, that's the miracle. It's a change in perception. And we're all after that. We're all looking for that. We're all trying to remember and there's a, there's, a, there's a paragraph in the uh, Lesson 153 uh, in, my defenseless, in My Defenselessness, My Safety Lies. And it says essentially that at some point, we won't be thinking about anything else. There won't be a moment when we won't be thinking with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but I, I'm realizing that the only thoughts, the only real thoughts I have are those I think with God, which is what the Course says. And that's all that's important. I mean, real quickly, I, I had another miracle happen where I was sharing something uh, with someone who thought I hadn't... Um, I hadn't completed an agreement with her and I actually got pretty angry and I, and I yelled at her, but I stopped right there and I didn't say, I'm willing to see this differently. I didn't put it on the altar. I just had stopped there. And, and when that was made clear to me, um, 
I was like, what am I doing? What, why am I here? This is not acceptable to me. This is not why I'm here. And so with that, there was a big shift. And, um, and I'll be watching for that now. Um, I just, I want to say, Dan, that I yeah, think, go ahead. yeah, I think for us, the hardest part is like, you know, I get the metaphysics of the course that says there's the objective of being at peace and happiness. But I think over and over again, the experience is we, I can't skip steps. I cannot skip steps. I have to go and experience this moment. Does it feel painful? Do I feel fearful? Do I feel anxious? Do I feel worried? Am I all of these things? And as soon as I feel that, it's just the opportunity for me to pray and to yeah. pause, forgive, accept the atonement, express, really express it. Because my brothers here are holding the space for me. If I don't express it, this is the path I'm called to, is to share it by relationships so they can hold the space for me like Jesus in the boat with that guy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's it too. It's not something I would push down, but it's definitely something I'd be aware of. And I'm, you know, and I'm grateful to my mighty companions for holding that space for helping me to, to see. And uh, it's stuff I wasn't aware of lots of times. It was just reaction. So um, we've got a couple of minutes and, and maybe we can go out with this, this next uh, song. Yes which is um, called Madness, and uh, it's Alanis Morissette. And maybe we can just fade out with that? Yeah, start it. and before we do, we just want to say thank you. We love you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Dan. I love you. Me too.